I'm here, yes, um, that's ResearchGate. Um, to understand ResearchGate a little bit more, um, maybe it's good to just to know a bit the story behind it. Um, I, my background is medicine and computer science, and I realized during my research this um, um, very hard to find people with specific skills to solve problems if you're sitting in your laboratory. Um, and I then started to use the tools which existing um, and I noticed it's just too hard to to get through um, and end of 07 beginning of 08 I talked to m my co-founders uh, later co-founders and said hey uh, there has to be a social network only for scientists um, I have to be honest I didn't think about publications I didn't think about publication systems and to change something in this space my uh, first idea was a pretty practical approach to say there has to be a place to present yourself as a scientist and connect with other scientists and getting problems solved as a crowdsourcing uh, tool. Um, yeah, and then we started and um, we, from the beginning, we launched in May 2008 and we had a very, honestly, a very poor version uh, as the first version. Um, and we used the feedback of the community to build the applications which they think they need. Um, so, uh, as my background as a scientist, I had some ideas in my in my head, and I distributed them within the community, and wanted to see if if they have similar ideas or that's that's the right way which we do, which we're taking. Um, and then then we start building these applications. Uh, what you can see here is just. Um, the login, after I logged in into ResearchGate, you see in the middle a news feed. Um, the left hand side, um, you see, um, just excuse me, you see the menu um, for the different, um, different applications, and on the right hand side, some suggestions and some birthdays. Um, what is interesting to see is um, especially the group sections. Um, which genetics methods um, the group sections uh, one part um, which I thought is that there has to be groups where people can discuss research related issues and one group is the methods group which is the interdisciplinary group um, and people using it for solving problems um, so I mean you see someone is asking a question seven hours ago and you get answers so the community is um, very active in, in exactly doing um, um, and, and, and discussing these um, problems the users or the, the scientists have in their laboratory. Um, and the groups were from the beginning one of the major, um, uh, one of the cores within ResearchGate and this is why we're building right now a better, a better product and a new group f functionality. Furthermore, you can follow events, um, scientific conferences, which you can see here. Um, so users and, and conferences put their conferences in. We started that several weeks ago, um, and now we have um, hundreds of conferences. The idea behind that, um, this is also what we're building right now, is that the conferences can put their abstracts and their talks into ResearchGate and then users can follow even if they're not part of the conference. They can see what is presenting and what, um, yeah, what kind of results were presented there. The good thing is that the conference abstracts are not disappearing after the conference is over. You still can be in touch with the people who went to the conference, who followed the conference, etc. And um, the third, uh, one another application which is uh, which we thought is very important and what. Um, where we are yeah, putting a lot of effort in and building it is a publication suggestion um, fun, uh, application. So we try to aggregate as many publications as, as possible. We have now around 40 million publications, um, metadata, sorry, metadata of 40 million publications and hundreds of thousands of full text uploaded by the users if they are allowed to do it. Um, and we're suggesting based on your interests publications. Um, and now, um, what um, um, what Zönke also already mentioned in his uh, presentation, the unique identifier for scientists. So you have here now author, um, different authors, and um, you can look at the author 
profile of the person and you can see his publications and impact points he gained and his top authors, uh, co-authors. And what we're building right now is, uh, oh, sorry, what's already in the system is that you can claim the profile that you say, okay, that's me. Um, and based on that, you can uh, build your bibliography um, or your publications very fast into your profile. Um, yeah, so this is short overview thing about ResearchGate. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry? Keep talking. Keep talking. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think, again, um, the topic signed 2.0. Um, ResearchGate, when ResearchGate was developed, it was a more practical approach. And now we see what we're changing. And now we're trying, of course, we're looking at what, what is changing. And I also saw that in my PhD thesis that uh, publications and impact points are not every time fair, especially if... Um, if, if the review process is not transparent, you don't know who reviewed your paper, um, and other things which are not fair. Um, so we have in mind in the future to build, um, within ResearchGate, a publication system. Uh, we have some ideas about it. For example, that a new impact point shouldn't be based on, um, shouldn't be based on a journal, it should be based on an article. Um, so how many times an article was cited? For example, if you look at nature, you see that only, I think it's around 5 to 10 percent of all, but I think um, the nature um, person can tell us more, only 5 to 10 percent of the publications in the journal contributes to the high impact factor of, of this magazine, of this journal. So there are lots of papers who cited a lot of times, and there are lots of papers that cited almost uh, any, in no time. So it's um, that's why, and another ex in a complete other example is my professor published in a, in a very low impact um, paper journal, and it got cited lots of times, much more than the, was represented by the impact of the journal. So we thought about a publication system within ResearchGate, uh, which is more based on on the article itself. And the beginning of that is that we want to use the discussions within ResearchGate as a preform of a publication. Um, because at the end, if, um, if a discussion started and someone asked a question, he asked a question about a specific problem he has. Um, lots of negative data exists already in the world. Um, I think 80 or 90 percent of my research was negative. Um, and at the end, you publish only the 10 percent which worked. The basic idea behind that is that if you take a discussion and take this as a basis for a publication and encourage the user to say, hey, um, the person who started the discussion and the f X amount of people who contributed the, to the discussion with the highest rated ratings we become the authors of this publication. They get an email say, "Hey, you have to bring this somehow in a specific design structure, which we haven't, which we have to think about more." And then, at a, after a specific time period, it will be a publication. And this is the first step uh, towards publication 2.0, how you're calling it. Um, and this is what we what we're building pretty soon. So this is um, the idea behind it. I want to see how users are going to use it and how the scientists are going to accepting it. Um, I still think, as your first numbers, Alexander, uh, showed uh, clearly, is um, are that still a lot of scientists are not using it. They're thinking about it and they know the tools exist. But I think it's just a matter of time. My professor told me once um, that his professor told him when email came out, he said, ah, email, you know, I still use the standard way of sending the reviews to, to the journal. I don't want to use email. And he was like, no, email is the new thing. You have to use it. And I remember when I get to my professor, say, hey, uh, Albert, I have an idea. Uh, social network for scientists said, ah, no, social network for scientists, that's not what you should use. That's use, there's email, there's Google. Yeah? And I think this is somehow we have now a shift and we are right in the middle of the shift.